Theobromine, it's what killed Fido. So theobromine is the toxic component of dark chocolate for dogs. However, it's a different mechanism of action in the human body. And a lot of people think that simply because it's toxic for dogs means that it's going to be toxic for humans as well. Well, I wanted to do this video because a lot of people have asked me my opinion on theobromine and its effects when coupled with caffeine. Well, a perfect example with that is going to be dark chocolate because that literally takes caffeine and theobromine in just about a perfect ratio. So I'm going to explain in this video what theobromine is, how it affects your body, some of the positive benefits, but also what you need to be cognizant of so it doesn't make you depressed and it doesn't slow down your weight loss goals. So dark chocolate's been used in food and medicine since about the 16th century when we really sort of discovered that it has euphoric benefits. It can help you feel better, it can really lift your mood. And you may have noticed, you may have read before that dark chocolate has the benefits, but milk chocolate and white chocolate do not. You see those levels of theobromine are significantly higher in dark chocolate. So that's why you get the benefit from dark chocolate versus say white chocolate or milk chocolate. In fact, little cacao nibs, those little teeny dark chocolate nibs are probably the most concentrated form of theobromine that you can get. But what exactly is theobromine? You see, theobromine is in a classification of something called a mexylxanthine derivative. Now, mexylxanthine derivative is also going to be something like caffeine as well. And what that ultimately means is it's something called an adenosine antagonist. You see, the way caffeine and theobromine work in the body, you've got adenosine receptors in your brain. And this is a very simplified way of putting it, but those adenosine receptors in your brain have little things called adenosine that plug up the adenosine receptor. When those adenosines plug up the adenosine receptor, it makes it so that it's blocking fatigue. It's basically preventing the flow of fatigue getting into your brain for a number of reasons. Well then, what happens when you have caffeine, obviously you're blocking that. So you're getting that extra boost of energy because you're not being combated with fatigue. Well, later on, as that wears off, the fatigue can pile up and pour in. That's why you can crash from caffeine. So that's basically what a mexylxanthine derivative is. Now theobromine is at a much smaller scale in caffeine, much less effectiveness on adenosine receptors, but it still is the same general kind of premise. So the thing about mexylxanthine derivatives is they can have an addictive component. You see, you've probably heard that coffee can be addictive. You've probably heard that dark chocolate can be addictive. Well, here's an interesting study that shows not just addictive qualities, but actual affinity for something and true enjoyment out of something that contains theobromine and caffeine. So in one particular study that I found interesting, there were two groups, a placebo group and a regular group. Now that placebo group consumed a drink that tasted the exact same as the regular group. Placebo group's drink did not have caffeine or theobromine in it. The non-placebo group did have theobromine and caffeine in small quantities. Well, over the course of a few weeks, it was found that those that consumed the drink with theobromine and caffeine not only got more addicted to the drink, but they actually developed an affinity for it, meaning they craved the drink, they enjoyed it, they sought pleasure out of it, whereas the placebo group just really didn't give a care. That just goes to show you the power of an adenosine receptor when it comes to just developing a liking for something. Now, that can play a big part because theobromine can be good if you're using it in moderation. Now, let's talk about the benefits of theobromine. Theobromine is probably one of the most powerful antioxidants that's out there. It's an extremely powerful anti-inflammatory and it has a longer half-life than caffeine, meaning it's lasting about six to 12 hours in the body versus two to four like caffeine. So it's a more sustained response within the body and it can provide a more sustained anti-inflammatory response within the body, which is pretty darn awesome. But additionally, it has an effect on DNA and RNA, which is really more recent science. What this means is it can actually inhibit or induce particular components of gene expression. What that means in human terms is it can actually allow you to reach your genetic potential, but sometimes hold you back depending on what the gene expression is. Now that's a topic for another day, but still pretty interesting science that's emerging. Additionally, theobromine has a huge effect on cholesterol, raising your HDL cholesterol and lowering the bad LDL, but that's just one added benefit. But let's talk about how theobromine can affect your fat loss. See, theobromine isn't this huge fat loss contributor like people think, but it does have some effects and here's why. So theobromine is a mild diuretic. Anytime you have a mild diuretic, you're going to encourage gastric emptying. So the contents of your stomach can be emptied a lot faster, which means you may not absorb as many of the calories. You can see how that's not a good thing for the long term, especially when we're always trying to maximize the absorption of nutrients. But that immediate diuretic effect does have an impact on your overall calorie absorption. But the real reason that theobromine is huge when it comes to fat loss has to do with insulin. You see, it helps insulin resistance and it helps improve insulin sensitivity. You see, in a 2005 study, they took two groups, one group that consumed white chocolate for 14 days 
and another group that consumed a dark chocolate for 14 days. What was very interesting was at the end of the 14 day period, those that consumed white chocolate had almost no increase in their insulin sensitivity, but those that consumed dark chocolate had a fairly dramatic increase in their insulin sensitivity. Now when it comes to insulin sensitivity, that really dictates a lot of that glucagon response and how much fat you can ultimately burn. So if you can be more insulin sensitive, you can ultimately be more sensitive to the good foods that you eat, which unfortunately means you can be a little more sensitive to the bad foods that you eat as well. But this wouldn't be an honest video if I didn't talk about some of the negative components of theobromine. They're out there a lot, people are talking about it, they're definitely raising some awareness with it. But what it comes down to is consuming it in moderation. You see, what we have to look at is the fact that when you consume about two to 300 milligrams of theobromine, which is about the amount in a 50 gram chocolate bar, like kind of a smallest chocolate bar, that elicits a positive response. That elicits those feelings of well-being. That elicits that lowering of the blood pressure. That elicits that feeling that allows you to get through the day and have a little bit more energy. But what was found is when that level crosses up to 500 to 1,000 milligrams, you reach sort of a point of diminishing return. At 500 to 1,000 milligrams of theobromine, it was reported that there were more feelings of dislike and more feelings of depression rather than that euphoric feeling. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to moderation. But you know I'm a huge proponent of dark chocolate. Use it in small bits and pieces throughout the day, maybe one or two ounces throughout the course of the day. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos for more information about how you can get the best possible shape of your life while still being the best possible all-around person. See you soon.